Yeah, it's a fucking pickup video. Again, this is just miscellaneous stuff. Um, the usual type of stuff that I, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, talk about. Play show and tell, whatever, what do, you, what do you want, whatever you want to call it. Um, um, start with toys, which is kind of going to be the bulk of this. I didn't get very many movies this time. Uh, the month, this past month has been fucking dry as far as movies are concerned. Uh, there were some universal releases that were... Uh, at Dollar Tree stores, and I decided to check one of those out, but they had been picked over. Um, I was kind of hoping to find uh, Danny the Dog, or Unleashed, as it's known in the uh, United States or North America. Um, it's a Jet Li movie, and uh, those were showing up at the Dollar Tree stores, and uh, they didn't have anything at all uh, left at the one that I checked, except for a bunch of, like, Tybo DVDs, and I was like, mm, no, thank you. But anyway, so let's start with the Masters of the Universe classics, because we all know how much I love these things. All right, uh, this is the most recent release. It is, um... This is Darius. Get behind the camera and make sure you, this is actually in focus and in frame. Yeah, there we go. This is Darius. Darius is from the new He Man line that was from 1989 to 1992. The figure was um, canceled at the 11th hour because uh, Mattel could not get the uh, internal. Uh, mechanism to work basically what he would be able to do was um, his wrist would spin uh, you would roll a wheel on his back his wrist would spin and the object in his hand it's a whip the bolo and uh, it would rotate above his head to knock down enemies he um, wasn't in the, the really bad cartoon that was created for the, the New Adventures of He-Man, is what it was called. Um, he was very prominently featured in European comic books, though. And he played a pretty major role in those comic books. And this actually is a very cool. Uh, finally getting this figure is a, a, a great thing for a lot of people. Especially people in Europe. Um, because he did plays such a major role in the comic books that were released over there. And this this shield actually goes to uh, He-Man. So you can kind of mix and match the parts. And his helmet is one that can be placed on his head. Pretty cool. Didn't think they were going to make the helmet removable, but they did. Uh, here's the back of the card. So you can see what Darius looks like there. Really nice figure pretty happy to see it, um, especially since uh, I've known about it for a really long time and it was one that I always kind of wanted and never knew what the deal was until I got um, internet connection back in like, I don't know, 97. I found out that the figure wasn't actually made. Okay, uh, next up is something pretty special, sort of. And uh, there, there, this is a PowerCon exclusive. PowerCon is the only Masters of the Universe convention. Um, they've been off for a couple of years. And uh, they were in Torrance, California uh, about two weekends ago at, as of this uh, recording. And this is a, a variation of Beastman. Beastman in uh, red coloring to make him look like he did on the back of the cards or the back of the, not the cards, the little mini comic that uh, came with early versions of the figure. Alfredo P. Alcala uh, just colored him completely red 
except for uh, a few details here and there. Um, this figure was not one that I necessarily wanted until I saw it, and then I was like, okay, I'll, I'll take that. Especially considering that I actually got these. There was two PowerCon exclusive. There was three PowerCon exclusives. Two that I wanted. Um, this one I didn't want at first, and then I changed my mind after I saw it. And um, yeah, uh, I'll be probably opening this eventually, but. For now, I'm just going to keep it as is. And the other one is... This is... Um, uh, Cobra Khan. Uh, there was a repaint of Cobra Khan that was made in Argentina. Argentina, South America, Germany, um, other areas of Europe. Masters of the Universe was extremely popular popular over there um, after its demise here in North America. Uh, as you can see, he has the Snake Men emblem stenciled onto his chest. And if you look a little bit closer, he also has some camouflage details on him. This is, this is how he was re-released -re in um, Argentina. And they also, for some reason, in Argentina gave him buzz offs arms as you can see from those claws here and they painted his boots gold um, he was known as camo con and it continues to be referred to that uh, amongst collectors and, and stuff uh, there are a lot of fakes of the um, original version of this figure, the uh, the classic uh, Argentinian version has been bootlegged a lot, so it's pretty cool to see this figure represented in the uh, modern Masters of the Universe classic style, and uh, very happy to have this. This is the one that I wanted the most, and then the, once I saw the Red Beast Man, I said, "Okay, I'll I'll, I'll go," especially considering that the guy that I bought these from. He gave me them at uh, at cost. I got them for very cheap, uh, considering that people are, are being very exploited of, of uh, the other people that didn't make it to the convention, including the convention um, organizers. They uh, did do a little bit of a, a game of... Uh, Plan well, you're not going to be at this convention, so we're going to charge you extra. And I, I didn't opt into that, so uh, I'm not going to harp on them too much. I mean, they they, they got to make money somehow. So I did find these World of Nintendo guys uh, when I went to Walmart to guy buy some emergency toilet paper. Uh, found this 8-bit Mario. Um, I don't typically collect these at all, uh, but I thought this was cute, so I had to pick it up. I just I couldn't resist, and I also grabbed this 8-bit link, which, um, these might be the only two that I ever buy, to be honest. Um, I like these. They're, they're cute, and, uh, my wife asked me, uh, what Legos they were when I when I showed them to her, and I thought that was kind of funny. And uh, so let's uh, start thumbing down my video right now because I'm about to make the the most unpopular YouTube pickup video of all time, the most disliked video of all time. So um, I've got all four of the new Ghostbusters. So here is uh, Melissa McCarthy. Kristen Wiig. This chick. I don't know who the fuck she is. And then uh, this other chick. I don't know her name. And 
Yeah, so that's that's pretty much that. My wife bought me these the other day when we were at the mall because I asked her to pick me up something from the little candy store. I asked her specifically for this Nintendo uh, Mario question mark block, which has some sort of candy in it. I think they're coins. I'm not sure, but I haven't opened them up yet. And uh, she surprised me with this little uh, Mario Head tin, which I, th I thought was pretty cool. This one says it's uh, Brick Breaking Jawbreaker Candies. Whatever that means. And those are fun. I like the little tins. And I got a refill of my favorite, which is these Skull and Bones things. These are just cavities waiting to happen. I, I can't, can't fucking control myself. I'm a piece of shit. Okay, movies. Start with two Blu-rays that I got recently. Uh, start with um, Friday the 13th Uncut. This has been in the Walmart um, 750 bin for a while. Uh, I have part two. I got that one a long time ago. And I haven't been able to find part three in uh, 3D um, since way back, like four years ago, I think. Um, these are, uh, I think, out of print. I, I'm not exactly sure about that, um, but I think they are. But anyway, I just picked it up because I wanted it. It's Friday the 13th, man. What am I supposed to do? And here is uh, The Witch. And we got our homeboy, Black Phillip, on the cover. Talked extensively. Well, sort of extensively about uh, that movie on the um, Why Are You Listening to This Podcast. Shout out to those of you who listen. Um, although, apparently they don't know why. Uh, that, was, that was fun, doing the call-in on that. Uh, had a, I had a good time chatting with everybody. Uh, about my wife, Supernatural Season 10. So she's all caught up on that one, uh, finally. Took a couple years. I was at a pawn shop uh, not too long ago, and I found this episode of Masters of Horror, this homecoming, and it is still, still sealed. And it was only a dollar. I was like really happy to get that for, for a dollar because uh, it still had the. Uh, the outer packaging, the O card or the slip cover, whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, it may have like a, a trading card inside, I don't know. Those those are just a silly gimmick for a while. Um, I don't really want to go for like the uh, entire series, but uh, I did want to pick this one up because Joe Dante directed it and he's, he's a pretty cool guy. We got this tonight while we were grocery shopping at Walmart. I have no idea what the fuck this is. It's called The Other Side of the Door, and it has Jeremy Sisto in it from such things as Jesus, Julius Caesar, Clueless, and one of my personal favorites, a movie called May. That is a fantastic film, and he was in that. And, uh... Moving on to video games. I grabbed some. More than some. I, got, I grabbed apparently more. Shit, I got a, got a little handful here. Um, let me go back to uh, the start of this little thing here. Okay, so. Um, jumped on the bandwagon. And you can just flip me off if you want. I bought Demon Souls. Uh, not really knowing much other than it's hard. And uh, I did want to play co-op with a couple of friends of mine. My pals John Paul and Deborah. They are uh, still up for that. If there is on online uh, co-op at all. 
I don't really know how the online on this works. It's just this is a weird game. Kind of hard to figure it out. <clears throat> I uh, recently found, finally after a couple of years, um, a black label uh, Mortal Kombat Complete Edition. No longer a greatest hits cover. So I was pretty happy about that. And for shits and giggles, I bought the Doom BFG edition, or Doom 3 rather. I am not a first person shooter type guy, but uh, since it has, you know, the classic Doom and Doom 2 on here, I thought maybe it would be fun to give it a shot. And, uh, you know, it's not going to kill me to give it a try, so I figured I might as well. Yesterday I picked this game up, Viking Night, yeah, Viking Battle for Asgard. This looks kind of cool. Um, this is a 360 version, as you can see. I have a whopping two games for the 360 now. I have a Kai Katana and Viking. So my collection is off to a great start. And um, I'm going to be picking up a 360 here probably in about two weeks, maybe. I'm going to get one of those real cheap ones that they sell at GameStop that doesn't have a really uh, uh, hefty hard drive. Just because I'm probably only going to play like maybe two or three games for it, like shooters, and that's going to be really bad. Uh, if I can find Raiden 4, that would be great. Uh, there's not one in the entire state of Washington. Or uh, Idaho, which is kind of weird. Uh, maybe I'll just buy it off of eBay, which doesn't seem too far removed from reality at this point. Uh, okay, so moving right along with these games. I got Muramasa Rebirth. And this is, as you can tell, a Vita game. And, uh, yeah, I uh, played that a little bit, and it's pretty cool. The Walking Dead Season 2 for Vita, I've been playing this uh, here and there, and I do enjoy this so far. Uh, I'm on the last chapter, I haven't um, started that one up yet, but I'll be finishing it up soon, and then I'll probably play it on the PlayStation 3 just to get those trophies up there. And uh, got Spy Hunter. This is okay. Uh, it's nothing special, but it's it's decent. I haven't played it enough to really have a solid opinion on it, but it seems pretty cool. <coughs> and uh, here's something that I will never play, but I couldn't pass it up because it was real cheap. I think it was only like um, ten bucks, and that is Borderlands Two, which. I have downloaded because it came with my Vita and it's on a memory card and um, but yeah I, I I know I'm never gonna fucking use it so anyway there's that and uh, oh uh, if you couldn't make that out Jennifer Code would you like to see that closer there we go And, again, don't know why, but I picked up the most recent issue of Horror Hound. Uh, if any of you guys are familiar with a magazine called Tomart's Action Figure Digest, this is kind of like the horror movie version of that. In fact, the um, editor-in-chief of this magazine, his name is Nathan Hanneman, uh, he wrote a book for Tomart Publications about collecting horror toys and this is almost all like every page is some kind of collector shit for like horror nerds and stuff and I, I don't mind any of that stuff but there's nothing in here like they don't really do like horror movie reviews I mean they do have kind of like a column based review now but back in the beginnings of this magazine, they really never did review anything. It was always just, hey, look what you can buy. Mezco is making this. 
NECA is making this. And it was all just one big fucking advertisement for their own convention and uh, other people's conventions. That they, they have a list of conventions in here that are coming up. And whenever there's one that's passed, they always have photographs from the convention uh, to show what you missed. I've been to two horror conventions um, since 2000, 2004 and then one again in 2006. And uh, those were fun. Uh, I don't know. The, the landscape of, of the, the horror convention scene has changed quite a bit, especially since uh, guys from The Walking Dead appear at these things and they overcharge for like autographs and photos and stuff and it's become kind of the norm for uh, people to um, instead of like letting you take a picture at their at their table what they'll do is they'll organize a photograph event and you get in a long line and you wait on the, on this line and the dude that you're gonna or the girl or whatever whomever you're going to get your picture taken with they'll have it set up like Sears or some shit or Kmart or whatever the studio there and they'll have some shit backdrop and um, you'll walk up pay your money and some professional photographer will take the cam or will take your, your, the picture with their camera and you have an option of having the picture sent to you to your home address or you can have it printed out there and then they can sign it when you're when you're there at the convention like after an hour or so and um, I don't like that it used to be much more relaxed and uh, I think a lot of these promoters have become much too big for their britches and they are they are a business I understand that but at the same time they're they are exploiting uh, the fans and uh, I don't appreciate it and I don't think I will be attending any more conventions ever again at this point that may change. My opinion may change about that, but I have to be proven wrong uh, on my opinion of this situation, which has come up ever since the the Walking Dead cast has been pretty much at every fucking convention that comes along whenever they're not shooting. Norman Reedus and uh, Sean Patrick Flannery will be doing like a Boondock Saints reunion, a reunion every fucking four months. I don't get it. Excuse me. I had to suck down some water there because <clears throat> my throat is a little bit dry. I've been um suffering very badly from allergies and uh, I'm not happy about it <sighs> uh, the pollen has been like at an all-time high from from what I understand here in uh, in Spokane and it's just been miserable my eyes feel like they're bleeding um, if I don't take Allegra D my nostril here will just turn into a leaky water faucet it's not even snot that's coming out of it it's just fucking runny ass watery liquid it's so annoying and just awful and if it happens in public it's embarrassing and uh shit if, if it happens in private it's kind of embarrassing but whatever you know the medicine helps uh I just wish it helped more. I've uh, got a few CDs because I like, I do like music, some music. Um, I'll just go through them real quick. I got um, Alice in Chains Facelift, which I, I'm kind of replacing some of the stuff I used to have when I was younger. 
and um, this was one of the albums I had. Uh, funny enough, when I very first heard Man in the Box, I thought my uh, dad was listening to like the classic radio station. And this is um, an assen the Essential Alice in Chains collection. So it's uh, two discs of, uh, it's basically just like the best of thing. I haven't been able to find dirt for uh, a new copy of dirt, but I would buy that if I saw it. And I uh, picked up Talking Heads Stop Making Sense. This is the new special edition that was released. Um, Gosh, I'm going to say this was released probably in 1999, and it has uh, every song that was in the movie. This is a concert movie. Stop Making Sense was a concert movie. One of the best, actually the best concert movie ever made, uh, music-wise. Um, there's comedy concert movies that are also very good, but this is really good stuff. Uh, the keyboardist from Parliament Funkadelic performs on this. And he recently died. I forgot his name, but he's on here. And um, this is a really good album. It's a really good movie. Definitely check this out if you like music, if you like Talking Heads. And um, they added uh, the original release of this um, was analog, and um, it didn't have all the songs that were in the movie. It only had some of them. This one has all the songs from the movie. Plus, it also has like seven, yeah, seven uh, un previously unreleased live tracks. So this is definitely worth seeking out if you are a fan of Talking Heads, or you just have uh, good taste in music. And then finally, uh, this is. Um, the final album that Peter Gabriel recorded with Genesis called Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. This is the third time I've owned this. And uh, this is a 2008 remaster. Um, it was remastered um, probably in the 90s at one point. So I'm not sure exactly what they did uh, here for this version. I haven't listened to it yet. so. I'll be checking it out, but this is a very classic album here. Good psychedelic rock album. Um, definitely check this out. It's produced by Brian Eno. I'm a big Brian Eno fan. I love the guy. Uh, I love his um, ambient music, and I love uh, a lot of the stuff that he's produced over the years. I'm hoping he doesn't shuffle off this mortal coil any time soon as a lot of uh, music heroes have been lately. Uh, you have never heard this. This is good for you. This is good music. It's good for the mu it's good for the heart, good for the soul, good for the mind and the spirit. This is uh, something that spoke to me on uh, many levels. I was also high out of my mind on pot when I was listening to it. That was <laughs> that was a 20 year old pothead, and uh, this is a very stony album. So if you happen to like that type of stuff, uh, go for it. And even if you don't, this is good music. You don't need you don't need the weed. It's it's good music on its own, but it helps. And that is that, guys. Because this room is my basement. When I get... never mind. Uh, this has already gone on for too long, so uh, I'll catch you guys later and you take care of yourselves.